this is the Decent Scale, and it's something I've been working on for several years. It is a open API scale. So I developed this because I wanted to write an app for a scale, and there were no open scales out there. Now, as part of making this scale, I documented the API, and we emailed a bunch of people out on the internet who make apps to ask if they wanted to support this open scale. And in today's video, we're going to review, <clears throat> sorry, and in today's video, we're going to look at several of the apps that now support the Decent Scale. And we're going to do this as several separate videos. So that's the intro to what you're going to say now. I'm going to start with Bean Conqueror now. This is the Decent Scale. It is an open scale, meaning anyone can write an app for it. And we're going to look at the app called Bean Conqueror today, which is a open source free as in beer and also as in cost app written by Lars Salbach in Germany. Now Lars and I have collaborated on quite some time on Bean Conqueror and the scale. And I'm really interested to see what Paul has been doing with it. So tell me, what is Bean Conqueror used for? Um... Bean Conqueror is used basically as a journal to record your brews from day to day, but it also is a platform to connect smart devices so you can gain that extra sort of scientific data to improve your brews. Um, but what I really love about it is it now negates my need for my leather bound journal, which I pretty much have in my bag, um, that I just put notes in on anything that I really enjoy and the possible reasons why. This essentially gives that whole convenience of a journal, but at your fingertips. And, you know, whereas, you know, you're repeating parameters instead of writing the bean um, or perhaps the roast or roast date, um, this just provides all those feels for you in one nice little form that is just, you know, as you're prepping in your morning, you just type it in um, and then entering your grind settings. And it also has the time feature which you start your extractions and it starts to record the data for you. So it kind of does a multitude of things, keeps all your data in one place, um, makes it more convenient for you, but also um, it ties in information that you may not have known, but you might be interested in. Um, and I feel that's really where it really shines. It's um, as much as it's useful as it wants to be, but if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, it also provides that as well. So um, we'll make a brew with it in a moment, and you can kind of see what sort of data is provided on a graph. Um, and I'll explain while we're doing it why it is important to have that data for you as you're doing the brew. And hopefully you will also see, because of so many variables, it makes your review of your brew afterwards when you're drinking it much more easier to digest. Um, I've had countless times where I'm sort of thinking, oh, did I pour in that much brew in my, in my first pour? Or was I sort of uh, holding back on my amount of water that I was meant to give? Um, so it just gives you the stepping stones to make your brews even better over time. Um, and also has some neat little stats in there too, which is as a data head, it's great to see. Cool, let's see it working then. Yeah, sure. So um, here, um, I have been making brews um, at home, but on this tablet, you can only see a few of them here. But um, as I mentioned, it does itinerize your brew. So I did a brew on the 20th and then two today, uh, all with the same um, batch of beans. And what is great about this is if you're using the same batch of beans, it just makes it really convenient. You see the buttons at the bottom, um, we're just going to brews. And then I'm just essentially tapping the plus button to add a brew and then it will bring up this menu here. Um, and because um, I'm just using the same um, batch of coffee, it's kind of carbon copied it onto the next form for you. So all you're concerned about is how much coffee you're putting in. So today we're putting in 15 grams. Press enter. Your brew temperature, um, in this case we've already burst it out and I've dosed it from the DU1 at 105. Um, that's already been pre-done for me. It does sound a little bit on the higher side, um, but from doing pour overs from the decent, I've realized that we're always fighting temperature, so I want my uh, water as hot as possible. And uh, now it kind of goes into some of the more important features for you in terms of the data that you want in the amount of water you will be brewing. So in this case, we'll be brewing 250. 
and the beverage quantity, you can put it in now or you can wait till afterwards when you finish to enter that in. Um, usually I end up with around 200 or 210, so I normally put in the maximum. And then we're pretty much ready to go. So it's pretty a painless process. Um, yes, when you first buy your bag of beans, you always have to do it anyway, input the data, but um, you, there is a photo um, that you can include on this. So it does make it easier. If you don't want to type, you can put that in. Um, and then it has a rating system here, which you can put in after you've done your brew, okay? So um, we will save, uh, well, we won't save this yet. We will just go up to the graph area here and um, I just want to check my scale is connected before we go. And this is a really cool feature if you just tap the three buttons at the top and there's just a single feature called reconnect scale. And it just goes through a please wait and then a nice lovely little message reassures you that everything is ready to go, which is lovely to see. And brings you up back to where you were. And I'm just gonna enlarge this graph for everyone to see. And that was a nice feature. I didn't realize that till after a few brews, but it was really good to see because I can now see the whole graph and all the data that I want. And just two buttons here. Uh, well, the button we're concerned about is just the play button to start the timer and to tear the scale to start our brew. So let's get started. Um, I've pre-wet my paper already. Um, so that's ready to go. And I've got a uh, coffee pre-ground. And because I put it in a cup, it is clumped all together. So I'm just going to use a puck rate just to fluff it out again. And that just creates uh, the best starting possible start you can with your grounds. And then as normal, I will shake up and down once and then left and right to flatten the grounds and our usual little divot inside as well. Okay. So if you're not sure what I'm doing here, we have done another video on this. Uh, you can go back to it and have a look what we're doing. But essentially the hole is just there so we can have a nice even pre-wetting of the grounds. So as soon as I press start, the, tear, the scale should tear automatically. And then we can really start uh, getting the data from our brew. So I'm just getting everything ready, getting my finger ready and the pour. And we're going to start and off we go. And it has teared. And it has teared, which is great off. to see. So my goal is 30 grams here, which uh, just a little bit under, but that's okay. Um, getting, in within, <laughs> <laughs> getting within one or two grams is generally acceptable. Uh, um, a tenth of a gram. <laughs> and I'm using the Tetsu Katsuya uh, ratio with a 4.6. So I'm going to do uh, more of a uh, uh, volume here at uh, 70 grams. So also mention that the Decent Scale has a timer as well. So it's um, counting down, we're about 37 seconds. And I assume you're looking at both the weight and yes, the time here. that's right, yeah. Um, so one of the great things about this recipe that I'm executing today is you don't have to be too concerned about the drawdown time between the pours. It's more of, um, has most of your uh, volume of uh, brew water being drawn down and then you can start your next pour. Um, usually with this uh, recipe, you'll find that uh, the hardest bit to master is just the start, but after that, everything follows through, a bit like dominoes. So um, I, I do highly recommend looking into this style of, uh, of brewing. Um, so it's, um, what I'm waiting to see and, and what I'm waiting to hear is slightly more dripping coming down. So it's kind of... I can see it dripping. So it's dripping down. So that's your signal to start your next pour and we will be adding an extra 50. So my ending weight should be around 120. And what I really like on the graph, if we get to get the graph on the screen, is that the heavier you pour in, it also shows that. So you can kind of see I started slow and then went high mm -hmm. and then low. And um, I really like this portrayed on the graph because if you are really uh, honing your skills on pouring and providing a steady pour, if you get a you know, pouring line that is pretty flat with a plateau on the top, you're doing a pretty good job. But if you're getting sort of a, a, a load of hills with valleys in between, then um, just say to yourself, you know, I could probably work on that a little bit better to make my brews more consistent. So one of the things I am interested in, I don't want to stop your, your mm -hmm. shot, uh, is um, Jonathan Gagne makes the point that with pour overs, you want to pour at the height where the laminar flow is still happening. And That's I right. see you're, you've got a nice little stream going on. 
and um, I think if you raise it a few centimeters, it would start breaking up. Yes. Now, yep. I don't know if Beam Conqueror does this, but this was one of the reasons on the decent scale I made it so that there is no smoothing of the data. The data is raw. And one of the things that you can tell with it is um, very small shock to the scale. So if I tap the table, we'll see it. But by the same token, if I pour too high, the flow rate should become more jittery. And that would be the clue that you should lower your kettle a little bit uh, and get a more consistent flow rate. Okay, so um, another good thing about having the uh, amount of water that you've added in is it also um, controls your slurry level. So you notice I've got a rather large cone, probably a little bit too big for the amount of coffee I'm using, um, but I'm also trying to keep it as low as possible. So I'm not getting any sort of um, um, lack of flavor from uh, coffee that's not been properly brewed. Um, and we're getting, you know, bypassed from the edge of the filter itself. Okay. So I can start to hear dripping now. So I'm gonna start again. And this will be one of the last pours I will do. And I think we will stop there. So I have stopped a little bit short under, um, but I'm just seeing that my drawdown is starting to slow down now. So I've made an executive decision during this one in that I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. So the intensity of this should be a little bit higher. Um, and I can put that in the notes. So, um, so that's a hand brew using Bean Conqueror. And we'll let it run until we've got the proper drawdown. Uh, and then the, the data all in that shot should be saved and you can review that at any time you want. Okay. Um, is there a sharing feature with other people? Yes, there is, yes. Um, so when we get out of this page, there is a share feature. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we can also link this to Visualizer. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so if you have something that you want to share with someone or you know someone's got the same beans as you and you've got a really good uh, uh, brew out of it, share it away and share the love mm -hmm. because that's essentially what this is designed for in that you found something really good and what better to share it with someone who has the same beans. So. Now, would this be mainly or only for doing pour over? Would you also use this if you're using a French press or an espresso? Yes, um, I only pick a V60 because I'm very comfortable with it, mm -hmm. um, but there are, is a plethora of, of different brew um, uh, apparatus you can use, and it has got its similar form style. So if you use an AeroPress or a Kalita, it will also have the parameters that you will need to set out. Um, oop. Bit of proper foliage there, but that's okay. Didn't ruin my brew, so we're all safe. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at my time now, and as we've been discussing, it has gone over five and a half minutes, So, and I've got still quite a lot of drawdown. So I'm gonna use this technique, which some of you may have seen before, in that I'm gonna keep some brew behind and see if I could add it in later. Um, but this is pretty much good to go, albeit a little bit hot, and we shall stop it here on the app. Okay. Okay. So hopefully that would have saved and I'm just going to exit into the main brew page and good thing is it has saved. And while we're here, there is an after brew section and we can obviously do our rating out of 100. Here, let me taste it and mm. tell you what I think of yes. your skills. <laughs> okay, I've got a cup here. Thank you. All right. Smells pretty good. Okay, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's not a bad brew at all. Mm. That's pretty good. Beautifully aromatic, really clean. A little bit tropical in there, which is quite nice. Mm. Yeah. So where would you rate this? I would rate this, if we can bring up the cam, I would go all the way up to 88. Okay. Um, I'm not quite going to 90 because We've only just started it. I don't feel like the flavors have opened up yet, but it is really clean. It's got really good amount of sweetness mm -hmm. and I'm loving the aromatics and the flavors I'm already tasting are very good. So uh, I would immediately go all the way up to there and I may add more points to it depending on how it cools and how it, how it, how it matures over time. So let's say you're doing several brews of this bean mm -hmm. over several days and looking at your scores, there was one that you liked more. 
Can you bring it up and follow it? Is that something you can do with this? Um, follow exactly, well, you can have the graph as a reference. That's what I mean. So uh, you can have yes. a previous one and then you try to match it. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's yeah. almost like a video game where you follow the path. Yeah, and that's what I really like about these apps is, is we're, it's bringing more fun to it mm. um, because, you know, note keeping can be a little bit laborious and, you know, it's, it's rather nice if you're sitting in a cafe, it's something to do. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're at home, uh, you, you want those tasks to be a lot easier and you will more likely do it as well if it's easier for you. Um, similar to, you know, your gym bag when you go to the gym, if it's not packed up, you're less likely to go to the gym, right? So um, that's what I really like about it. It's you can go back, review and, you know, do your own test to see if, it, if that was true. You know, oh, was it because I put less water here or more water here? Mm -hmm. um, was it my timing? Or was yeah, it or how timing? quickly you, um, you added water at each step. Mm. So your notebook might just say this much water at these timings, mm -hmm. but how quickly you added it is going to have a big effect. Mm. Um, and I guess that could tie in with the laminar flow effect. Mm -hmm. So if you're going in a little bit too slow, then you're probably not creating enough turbulence. Or creating or actually just bypassing because you're just pummeling. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah, yes, very good points. Um, so if we save this now, it will save it to the brew list and it'll say brew uh, added successfully, which is always lovely to see a confirmation. And it is now here forever for us to review. And just, uh, just for your point, John, uh, regarding the graph, um, if I bring it up here, if I bring it up big screen, oh yeah, it does. I think I have pressed it a little bit too many times. You've given it too much information. I have, I back. have. I've given it too much data. <laughs> no, it's back. Okay, so um, you can review it in, you can enlarge it, um, and you can see the main pause here. So um, you can get the timings and obviously the volumes that you've done. And um, if I bring, if I can, you can also share, which you asked before. Okay. So there is a share of the graph and you can also uh, download as well. Okay. Well, that looks very useful. I also say, um, surprised actually how attractive uh, this is. The colors kind of remind me of classic maps from the Tufty books. I don't know if he's done that on purpose, uh, but it's very pleasing on the eye. Something to know also is we're running this app on the decent tablet and it's in landscape mode, whereas quite a few apps out there only are made for phones and only screens that are in portrait. So extra thanks for having it work in that way. Um, I think that's a nice summary of this very useful app. Thank you, Lars, for writing this. Um, being Conqueror, you can Google it and download it on the various Play stores. And thanks, Paul, for showing me this beautiful app. No problem.
Okay, so um, okay. I mean it's okay. One comment saying the great thing with Beam Conquer is that it's very customizable to the point that you can modify what set of data you see on the screen for different methods. Okay, so um, one of the things that's great about Beam Conquer, says one of our viewers, is that it's highly customizable, and you can even um, change what kind of data is associated or what kind of data you're asking for uh, as part of your brew. Very nice, can't mm. And now it's repeatable. <laughs> mm. uh, it's quite funny you said it was 105 Celsius and like, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's 105 inside the machine. I know, Joe. We are getting ready to um, talk about Filtru, and I think Paul is almost ready. And today we're just gonna do uh, Beam Conquer and Filtru because both those are pour over apps. And we do wanna talk about Espresso Log and SCP as well. However, both those apps don't make a lot of sense with the decent. Um, first of all, Espresso Log, uh, has a lot of the same functionality that the Describe Your Espresso um, plugin for the Decent app has, so I'm not sure it would make sense there. Also, um, it's going to talk to the scale, and so is the Decent app going to talk to the scale, so that's going to clash. Uh, same thing with SEP, you wouldn't necessarily, you can use SEP with the D1, and I've got another video with that, but what I really wanted to show you was the SEP app with a traditional machine and how it lets you do some profiling or timing. In fact, a lot of the same stuff with SEP that we just showed with Bean Conquer is possible, but also with pressure tracking, so that's quite interesting. And what we're gonna do is bring our dual group E61 out of storage and put it here. And we'll, I've got the SEP pressure transducer already mounted on it, so I can, um, show you how to use SCP with a traditional machine to give it some new capabilities, which I think is where SCP really shines. And we'll also show you Espresso Log talking to a scale, talking to that E61 machine, because then that is also adding quite a bit of functionality to an older machine. Um, do, we want, do you want to put it flat so you're not, so you yeah, can actually I mean, use, I, I think I'm gonna suggest we do I'm just gonna push, push this down. There we go, yeah. like that. Um, Is that better for you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, so this one. What's that? Um, I see that it's not connected to the scale yet. Yeah, and... Um, so Paul has just noticed that uh, filter that he's been using to do pour overs has not got any scale functionality that he can find and you just realize that. So it probably doesn't make sense for us to talk about an app that doesn't talk to the scale. I mean, I guess we could do just a generic uh, review of it, but I think we'll reach out to the filter folks and 
find out because I did get an email saying we support your scale, but we can't find in the app where that might be. So I will announce that for a future video. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you, Bean Conqueror, Lars, and your entire family for watching. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later.